I recently came into possession of this fishbowl here. Now, I don't keep fish, and this is probably too small for them, but I do keep a lot of ant colonies, and now that it's began to warm up a little bit, I've been rehousing many of them. So far, we've rehoused my silky ants with an astounding 15 queens. It is a small tank which loosely recreates their natural habitat. And last week, we rehoused a small black ant colony into this pine forest ant tower, and I'm loving how it looks. I've also been really liking this spree of natural ant terrariums we've been on, so I thought, why not do it again? My fire ant colony are currently housed in this small plastic box, and I've been wanting to move them into something more natural for a while now. When I saw this bowl, I knew there was only one thing I could do with it. Now the bowl itself has a diameter of 30 centimetres, and by my rough calculations, holds around 15 litres. I'll make sure to put up the imperial units for you Americans. I don't want the glass cracking and as there'll be a fair amount of weight inside, I'll be keeping the bowl on a half a centimetre piece of neoprene. This will help to evenly distribute the weight, lessening the risk of a crack in the long term. I cut around it with a kitchen knife and then trimmed it down to shape with scissors. It fits perfectly under it, so I moved on. The first thing I did was create a drainage layer. I used a mixture of slate and flat rounded river pebbles as is what I had on hand. This layer will prevent this substrate from flooding, which is vital in this setup specifically as these ants like very moist environments, but not a swamp. As many of you will know, the next layer to separate this layer from the terrarium. This can be done in a number of ways. I'm using geotextile fabric for this build. I cut out a small square and placed a jar on top of it. Then I proceeded to trim down the edges until I had a circle just larger than the bowl. The fabric was added into the jar. At this point the substrate can be added. As usual, I'm using my custom mix for which the ingredients are on screen now. The glass on the bowl has a few small pock marks and scratches, so I chose the side with the fewest imperfections to be the front. I tapered the soil down to this point. I wasn't too perfect with this as I want the hardscape to dictate the flow of this space, and I know it'll all be adjusted next. And speaking of hardscape, for this build I have a wide selection of dragonstone, black lava rock, and spiderwood. To begin with, I experimented with many different orientations of dragonstone. I first tried to arrange it vertically, but I wasn't thrilled with how it looked, so I carried on. When working with dragonstone, it's important to go with the natural striations of the rocks, otherwise things can look messy and out of place. Another orientation I tried was a horizontal arrangement, but again I wasn't feeling it. As you saw, I tried a large piece of lava rock and liked how it looked, but it was just too big. So instead, I smashed a larger piece of lava rock into much more manageable sizes with a hammer. Instantly, I knew this is what I wanted to go with. I tried a few separate rocks in different places and very quickly everything fit together nicely. In the end, I decided to have a few larger rocks in the background, tapering down to the front giving me a nice area to feed the colony. Just like with the rock, I spent a while trying to arrange the twigs in different ways. As I already had the foundations, it went much quicker, especially that I roughly knew what my desired look was. I wanted the wood to be more of an accent, looping over the path once or twice, but not to dominate the overall scape. Once I had all the wood in place, I decided to attach it down with cyanoacrylate superglue, which is completely animal safe. I added a droplet on each of the contact points. However, the lava rock is so porous that it absorbed all the glue before it could cure. This might be possible with the gel form, but not to worry, the wood didn't need to be secured down anyway, as it won't really be disturbed. And, with the hardscape already, the planting could commence. However, before they could all be added, I first had to rinse the roots off of all the soil. One of the plants I'll be using is this peace lily. Most of the soil came off very easily. After that, 
it was easy to separate it into many smaller plants. I began the planting process with one of the small peace lilies which I added in the background. A fern was planted near the lily as a direct contrast with its finer leaves. really bring the scape together, I'm using an assortment of mosses. The larger hypnum mosses were planted further back. This helps create a better sense of depth. Mixed in the moss are also liverworts and small tufts of mini grass. It adds a really nice variation in texture that's pleasing to the eye. It's also much more natural than the very separate patches of single mosses. As I had loose chunks of this grass, I pulled pieces off and rolled them tightly to create small pucks that could be planted easily. I'll also be using some Boston ferns. These have a much finer texture than the others. They were positioned to best complement the design, acting as an intermediary between the denser planting in the back and the more open, sparse foreground. When I began this build, I wasn't feeling the colour combination of black lava rock and brown substrate. However, as the plants were added, I began to like it more and more. It still needed breaking up a little, as it was too monotonous for my liking. To do this I used smaller pieces of lava rock, bringing them closer to the front at angles that I thought looked best. To further add texture to the substrate, I added small touches of coarse black sand. This further grades the transition between the larger lava rock and substrate. Now that the vast majority was done, I could see a few small changes to the hardscape needed to be made to bring my vision to life. To do this, I added a few thin pieces of spiderwood to complement the flow of the scape. In direct contrast to this, I positioned a slightly bulkier stick against the flow. This creates tension and brings intrigue to the terrarium. A few alder cones were added. They break up the larger patches of moss well. They will also degrade over time, releasing extra nutrients for the plants. Now for the last bit that will really complete the scape, leaf litter. I'm using a selection of oak leaves and various other types from my area. I had no particular rhyme or reason here. Instead, I let the leaves do the talking. Over time, they'll break down, so I'll replace them as needed. This cycle will keep the soils enriched and the terrarium looking good. To keep the lands bioactive and clean, I added lots of springtails. They'll consume the ants' waste and break down any detritus. A scape like this demands its own light source. I'm using this gooseneck lamp that has three different brightness settings, perfect for observing the ants late at night without overly exposing them to light. With the scape all complete, there was only one thing left to do. Add the ants. Like I mentioned at the start, they're currently in a tubs and tubes setup. This will make it fairly easy to add them in. I simply lifted them up in their chest tube and placed it in the new space.
Off camera I had to pick out all the loose workers that were still in the box. It took a while to catch them all, but it had to be done. Now some of you might have noticed that I forgot to add a layer of flue on. I realised this as soon as I placed them in, and I frantically applied some. Fortunately, no ants decided to try and escape, so no damage was done in the end. I turned off all the surrounding lights and let them settle in. Within minutes they created trails up to an area on the right. Ants began to carry pupa up to the same area where the trails were headed. I suspect this colony has around 40 workers, but they're so active and brave that it feels like there are many more. The next day the entire colony had moved out of the test tube and there were a few workers bravely exploring the fresh lands. I allowed them to settle in for a few days. Well, here it is, the fire ant fishbowl. I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. I think the ants have made their nest here, so there's a few small piles of soil that weren't here when I first moved them in. Now as much as I'd like to add isopods, I know I can't because I know just how aggressive this colony can get and they'd most likely just kill anything on their territory. But I'm really liking how it looks and I can't wait to see how it grows and develops in the future. Let me know what you think down in the comments below and consider subscribing or even checking out my Patreon. Projects like this aren't the cheapest of things and I'd love to be able to continue making them. Anyway, that's all from me, so enjoy some final shots and thank you so much for watching.